Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing the Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. This is another game from Shadows Winter Tournament, and uh, I'm against Lawmaster of Sotek. And, uh, well, I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, it's blind picks, right? Everyone just picks factions and you find out what you're up against. It's that simple. You know who you're fighting, so you can take some guesses. And uh, against Sotek, <laughs> I basically thought, alright, he's either going to play Lizardman or Vampire Counts. So I'm going to roll the dice. Um, yeah, it turns out he's playing Vampire Counts, which is terrible. I, I've lost already. I mean, it's... It's terrible for Beastmen. It's just Beastmen don't win this. They just don't. Um, but, despite being ill for this week, you know, while I was uh, playing all these games, I didn't even care. I was, I was actually relishing the opportunity to play this one, because it is so fun to play, like, one of your favourite factions when you know they have almost no hope of winning and just trying to screw your opponent over as much as you can before you finally go down is uh, is brilliant. Any little victory just feels way better than a victory if you're playing it the other way around, you know? If you're playing vampire counts against Beastmen, you have no right to lose. It makes no sense to. So this way around, it's just a lot of fun, you know, seeing if you can edge out that victory despite terrible odds. Um, it's a lot of fun. Of course, it does mean, you know, it, I... Got a horrible, horrible matchup in a tournament, which is never good, but who cares? So here's my army. Gore herds with shields. I have four of them. So these guys, pretty good damage dealers. They'll do all right hacking through a lot of the fodder, but to help them with a lot of the fodder, I have Chaos Spawn. But, as well as hacking through fodder, one big reason why I brought the Chaos Spawn is because they're unbreakable. So I don't have to worry about them getting terrified away. They're going to be able to pin down a lot of things like skeletons and graveguard and stuff for a long time. And that's what I really wanted. Also, I wanted to add some more mass to my front line with the Razor Gores and some armor piercing. So not too bad at dealing with Blood Knights and things. You know, they will lose out, but they can get some good damage in, which is very nice. So uh, my front line, though, um, yeah, I've got a couple of giants in here. Giants have actually had a weapon strength buff in the last patch, uh, so since I last tried this, Giants are even better, which is great. Um, they were one of the ways that you could sort of eke out, you know, killing a Mortis engine early or something like that, because they hit so hard. So these two catch something out, it is very difficult to get that thing out alive, um, because they just hit so goddamn hard. Also, I have a Gorble, so something a bit quicker, that can just run around and chase things a bit, um, or be off dealing with one thing, and when the giants finally catch something, the Gorbal can run in and try and get that final blow on it, which is very, very handy. I mean, anti-large and uh, huge armor piercing. Just good combat stats. Very, very deadly. Also, here, I have a Bray Shaman of the Wild. He's there to kill as much fodder as possible, because that's the thing. Giants suck when it's just them against huge amounts of zombies or skeletons or whatever. They have such little armor and really low melee defense that cheap stuff can drag them down because they just can't kill them quick enough. You really want them to just hit a big single model, or possibly cavalry, you know, because you can just kill models. Um, but when there's hundreds of models, they're just not going to hit them quick enough. So having something that can just blast stuff with magic helps get through all the fodder. So that was the plan here. So my Bray Shaman, he's on foot in case they're a terror guys. I didn't want anything getting the anti-large bonus on him. So here you can see he has nothing but Bray Scream and Vile Tide. So basically the two cheapest AoE spells that I could bring. So these two will just smash stuff. And they're both magical damage, so if there's ethereal units, I'm still safe. Also, I have a Beast Lord. So the Beast Lord, again, on foot, he's going to be hiding around the giants, and he has a load of attack buffs. Well, actually, that's just minus six armor. That's unrelated. Um, no, but he's got Bloodlust to add armor-piercing damage. Brilliant on a giant. It'll put them up to, like, 800 melee uh, weapon strength, rather. It's crazy. Also, Apocalyptic Vision, plus 26 melee attack for nearby things, and Horde of the First Beast, plus 26 melee attack for some things. Oh, also, you know, charge bonus and leadership and stuff, but it's all about that melee attack. Kill things as quickly as possible. So, I've gone on for a long time about my army, but it's one of those battles where it's, you know, every little thing has to, has to matter, has to count, or you won't have a hope. So here you can see a Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. So Lawmaster Sotek, um, yeah, he's going with the meta here. I think the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, he's he's widely considered the best one now. Um, so yeah, very, very sturdy, very, very deadly. Just great, great buffs and debuffs that he carries. He's also got Konigstein Stalkers, which is pretty handy. That poison damage is nice. I've got poison too, though. And uh, also Crypt Ghouls, he's got some Sternsmen. I mean, Sternsmen are great. Uh, just that regeneration keeps them fighting forever. Graveguard, great weapon. Skeleton Warriors, he's got some Blood Knights back there. He's got the a Necromancer in the woods. He's always got a hidden Necromancer, always. Also, more Graveguard, more Spearmen. He has a Vargulf for trying to hunt down targets. So, um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't seem completely overwhelmingly great here, but... Just all that fear and terror and just constant, consistent damage and healing and... It's tough. 
So let's do it. So uh, straight away, charging in here, a uh, gorbel poised around the back. I'm smashing these crypt ghouls and the Conic Stein Stalkers and these Graveguard with a lot. That's the thing, with the huge melee attack buffs and things I have at my disposal, I can do a lot of damage to a few units very quickly and move on. So here, I'm trying to hit these guys with an AoE, getting some good damage into the Graveguard. And uh, over here, getting a bit of Brace Scream, helping kill those Crypt Ghouls very, very nicely. But, yeah, there's uh, Undeath Resurgent, which uh, will be taken away in the next patch, I believe, from, uh, from the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord in order to, you know fix him a bit. But, I mean, this infantry is getting really, really taken out. I mean, invocation of Hex, sure, but they're all crumbling, they're taking massive damage. So, now, Gorbel is getting uh, getting attacked, but look at all this stuff I have nearby. So now the Giants are going to come in and try and go for that Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. I need to try and catch him. But, it looks like he's going to get away this time. So, infantry really suffering. Over on this side, um, his infantry is winning out slightly, by the looks of it. You know, it won't take much help to tip that in his, uh, his favour. So here, get another Another spell off to try and whittle these guys down, but unfortunately, my Bray Shaman was caught on the edge, which is terrible. The Blood Dragon can just... he just does so much damage so quickly that that Bray Shaman's gone, and I've got nothing. I've got nothing to chase him off. I don't have any centigores or anything that can block him in. So, uh, that's it. That's it. It's, um, yeah, he's shattered. That's it. No more magic. That is a huge mistake this early on. Even though I'm getting some pretty great gains, um, it's not good enough. And here you can see the Blood Knights, they charged in. They got a Van Hell's Dance Macabre to give them extra melee attack, but look at the damage they've taken just from fighting giants and the Gorbel. Um, huge, huge amount of work I've done here, which is beautiful. But he's still got a very healthy Vargolf. This infantry is winning on this side, and this infantry is still holding on. You know, he's still got. <clears throat> excuse me, he's still got stuff holding on here. That's the thing, it just takes so long in these atricious fights. You know, the beastmen eventually just get damaged to a point where they start running away. And like these Goreherd, they might come back, but they're not going to stay in the fight long. They're just, when they come back, their leadership is going to be so low just from the damage they've taken, they're going to get terrified away almost immediately. And that's the problem with the Beastmen here. That's that's why they struggle. Those long, atricious fights, they can't do it. Which is why I've gone hugely with the just overkill. It's all about the just raw damage, try and kill stuff as quickly as I can. But that Bray Shaman would have been so handy. I could have got a couple more spells off in this area, and it might have freed up all of my units here. But Blood Knights, absolutely toast. They are getting absolutely decimated, which is superb for me. Absolutely superb. These are expensive units to have go down that way. So uh, it does have more Graveguard coming in, though. And as you can see, he's finished off all my Chaos Spawn on this side. I've got some units coming back in. They're not going to last long. And here you can see the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord is diving in to try and deal with me. I think he's uh, he's going for my Gorbel here. He realizes he has to get rid of the Gorbel. Because the Gorbel is the quickest. You know, I can control the pace of the battlefield a bit better with the Gorbel. So uh, now a nice rear charge from the uh, Razor Gore Herds, but the Helmet Discord is really limiting my ability to get anything done in here, which is real tough. Luckily though, Apocalyptic Vision has been sort of negating the negatives there, but uh, not enough. Um, but now they've all worn off, so it was kind of even. But I wasn't able to get some good hits on the Blood Dragon, unfortunately. So here you can see the Vargolf is joining the fight. Uh, still got some units that, you know, are coming back. There's my Bray Shaman over there. Um, Poor guy. And uh, now I'm stuck in this attritious fight. More breath attacks landing. And this is where things start getting difficult. Now there's just so much infantry and I have nothing in the way. All of the hits from all of these cheaper units are going to be hitting my unarmored giants. And the damage just starts to mount. But here, Blood Dragon Vampire Lord has landed. And I'm pathing my guys straight through. I'm getting everyone to attack this guy. Unless I can kill him, I've lost. So I just need to kill this Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. That's all I have to do. And look at the damage he took. Oh, he took so much. Look at his healing cap. You can see it, the little white line there, in case you don't know what the healing cap is. He can't heal past that. So that is brilliant for me. I'm getting some great damage in, and I'm going for him once more. He's very bold to have charged in here. Very bold indeed. But he is really running out of steam here. A lot of his stuff is crumbling. He's taking a lot of damage. And look at that, 900 health left. And unfortunately, my gobble has been, uh, yeah, has been routed. I, I can't. I can't get back to him, so he can chase him off happily. And uh, now my giants are fighting things that they should be fighting. And unfortunately, my Beast Lord is actually in a bit of trouble. His leadership is very low, despite the fact the balance of power is still fairly even. He's just not enjoying this. But Apocalyptic Vision, big boost to leadership and melee attack for everyone. So uh, maybe I should have waited a little bit longer, but he, he looked like he might run away at any moment. So I couldn't, couldn't allow that. 
could not allow that. But it would have been nice to hit these guys with the buff too. But hey, you know, got some great melee attack here. A lot of his stuff is starting to crumble. Unfortunately, he does have these Grave Guard in here and they're doing very well. And I think they're the ones that are hacking my Beast Lord to pieces. So, a bit rough. Oh yeah, and he does still have this Vargolf. Oh. So I'm trying to path out to deal with him, but I need to get back in. Because my Beast Lord is going to be on his own, so I can't have that. So, uh, Razor Gore Herd are going to be coming back in. You know, more, more um, uh, Gore Herds coming back in. But most of my stuff is shattering at this point. Balance power further in Sotek's favor. Because it's just this Vargulf has so much health. I think he's the one keeping the balance of power in his favor. Because as you can see, this guy's taking so much damage. If he lands one more time, it'll just take one hit from each of my giants to kill him. But he knows he doesn't have to land anymore. He can just sit there. I mean, it's, it's kind of upsetting, really. It's kind of upsetting. I can't really do anything about it. Um, I just have to sit here and fight this stuff, which is unfavorable. You know, without my, uh, without my, uh, what's he called? The, the, uh, Bray Shaman, that's the one. Without my Bray Shaman able to do AoE attacks, you know, on any blobs of stuff like this, I had nothing left to do it. So there we go, Valiant Defeat. I knew it was going to happen, but, oh, I definitely put in some hurt. So, personally, I consider this a win. I consider this a win, for me. Um, I, I think, I think this army did great. You know, considering the horrible odds, I think I had the right idea. Um, the one thing that really just ruined any hope of me actually winning against all the odds uh, was the Bray Shaman getting caught out too early. I, I needed more of those AoE hits just on, just to whittle down some of the infantry. You know, just get them to low enough health so my Gore Herd could just be killing models with every hit. I had to kill them before they killed me. Um, you know, my front line had to win, or at least... Or at least break even, you know? It's, yeah, sure, my front line got wiped out, but so did his. Because I knew my big guys could take on his without a problem. Uh, the Giants are just perfect in this matchup. Um, but there's not a lot else that can really back him up very well. Which is a pity. But, uh, yeah, I think this is a great build for it. I think this is a great build for it. Um, yeah, just not quite enough. Because it's vampire counts. And they just always win this matchup. And I really hate that. But I really want to try this again. I think it might be able to do it. Um, that's always the case, though, with these these beastman armies, you know, and, uh, well, anything, any sort of unfavorable matchup. There's always a point where you're like, I think this can do it, and then suddenly they bring a unit that you realize is a hard, hard counter to your entire army for some reason, and you're just like, yeah, all right, it's all falling apart. Maybe this isn't the way to go, but, uh, you know, it it feels close to me. This feels, feels like a winning formula, but... With every hard matchup, it just has to be done to perfection. You can't make a single mistake or you will lose. And that was one of those things. But it just came down to one mistake at the end of the day. And so I'm very proud of myself for this one. I never... I mean, I knew I was going to lose this. Which is why I enjoyed it so much. Weirdly. You know? It was just, what can I do before I go down? And uh, I think I did quite a lot. I mean, almost took out his lord. I mean, that was pretty crazy. I'm pretty happy with how I did. Those Blood Knights got completely demolished. Uh, the Vargulf took a lot of damage, but then ran away and got healed up and came back at the end and just, yeah, bullied me a bit. But, um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with this. Very. So, guys, uh, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And, of course, go check out Lawmaster Sotek and go check out Shadow Online Gaming, who's hosting this tournament and is casting literally every single game in the tournament. So, um, yeah, a lot of content there. So, uh, go and enjoy it. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.